Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So let's start. So today, our uh, machine learning seminar speaker is Chang Liu. Chang is from uh, is a PhD student in the uh, UC Irvine Computer Science Department, and uh, um, his research interests focus on uh, machine learning and its applications. Chang received uh, MSR PhD fellowship in 2011, and the same year he did an internship uh, with John Platt and Chris Meek. Uh, today he will be talking about uh, crowdsourcing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Danny, for the introduction. Um, could you hear me? Could you hear me? OK. Um, um, so this is a joint work with my friend, Jian Peng, and my advisor, Alex Eiler. Uh, it was presented in NIPS uh, last year. So crowdsourcing um, is the process of outsourcing the problems you want to solve to crowds of people. And recently has been become a very powerful approach for solving problems that um, computers cannot solve alone, and using uh, human by by harvesting human human intelligence, and it's also very powerful to gather uh, information and data from a crowd of people. Usually, can do a, lo a lot of uh, powerful things. However, crowdsourcing can be also backfires if you. Uh, don't treat them very carefully because humans tend to be very unreliable and they are very different from each other. So different people may have different opinions. It's a problem how to denoise the labels from crowds and how to aggregate the opinions from different peoples. So today I'm going to uh, focus on the consensus algorithm um, for this crowdsourcing setup. So uh, to be more specific, um, assume we have a set of images which um, have unknown true labels, binary labels. Um, for, for example, in this case, maybe you want to I, uh, identify whether there are ducks in the image. So assume there are too many images, so um, we hire a set of people, we open a call on one of the uh, plat crowdsourcing platforms such as Amazon Mechanic Turk and hire a set of workers. So now each worker is assigned with a subset of images and each image um, is again labeled by multiple workers. Doing this can um, make sure the redundant information um, to help the um, accuracy. So, but because the workers are very unreliable, so they may have different labels even for the, uh, for the same image. The problem is how to um, aggregate these noisy labels um, to get an estimation of the unknown true label ZI. So the, the criteria function here is to minimize the bitwise error rate, or just the expected number of uh, mistakes you can make, the number of um, wrong images. Um, because the workers are very diverse, so I measure the diversity using this reliability measurement, QG, which is just the accuracy, the, the probability of, um, for the workers to give the correct answer. Now we have experts which have very high accuracy QG, close to one. We have spammers. Um, they are lazy people that tend to just give random answers, ignoring the, uh, the problem itself. So they have QG approximately to half. And also we have adversaries. They tend to give opposite answers uh, for reasons, for all sorts of reasons. Um, so there are many uh, algorithms for doing this problem. Uh, albeit a naive algorithm is just to do majority voting. So, so here, because the labels are plus one and minus one, so I write it as a sum and a sign uh, formula. So, but this problem is definitely not very good for counting the diversity of the workers because it treats all the workers and all the labels uniformly. So in this plot, I show one of the, the results of one of, of one of my experiments so this black line is an oracle lower bound that you can get if you uh, exactly know the accuracy 
of each workers. So this is what you can get if you have some Oracle knowledge. And majority voting is here. So this is the error rate. So that's a very large gap that you can close by potentially combining diversity of different workers. It's presuming some distribution of spammers, adversaries, and so on, right? The fact that Oracle, the Oracle's. Uh, so it's, it assumes the QG is exactly known to you. But you also picked a distribution over the Qs. Uh, so, so once you know the exact values, you don't, it, it doesn't matter the distribution or the distribution. But this plot change when the, the distribution changes? Oh yeah, sure, sure. This is one of the examples. This is just a dominant situation. I was this is like empirical or this is just some article? Uh, this is some article uh, simulation. Just to show some concept, but I will show more experiments later. Do you know what the actual, what the true oracle is with the number of workers? Um, yeah, I know in this case. Yeah, I, I will definitely go back to this plot later. So another algorithm is an iterative algorithm proposed by David Kaga, C10, and De Deva Varad uh, So, So this is a quite interesting algorithm. It's basically a weighted version of majority voting. So here, each label LIG is weighted by a confidence level YGI. It's a real value. And this YGI is iteratively calculated by these two linear update rules. So basically, uh, intuitively, you can interpret these um, linear updates as sort of passing messages between the workers and the tasks. And this algorithm is very interesting, actually. Oh, I will refer this algorithm as QoS uh, for convenience in this talk. So it's a very interesting algorithm. People actually can show some optimal properties on the uh, sample complexity in asymptotic case. But however, it doesn't perform very well uh, sometimes in practice. And you may be wondering how, how people derive this algorithm. Actually, that's no derivation for this algorithm. Uh, in the paper, they just uh, write this algorithm, follow some intuition um, of belief propagation, but there's no solid connection there. So it's curious to understand what this algorithm is exactly doing and so we can improve it and understand the advantage and disadvantage of this algorithm. So in this talk, I'm going to present a more general algorithm that actually unifies uh, both majority voting and uh, QS. So both of them will be an extreme case of our algorithm with some um, special assumption. And all by smoothing between majority voting and QS, uh, we can actually get much better performance. So blue line is our algorithm, and the red line is QS. I will show more details on this plot later. Um, and our algorithm have a principal derivation. Um, another set of algorithms are EM algorithms. There are a lot of EM algorithms starting from uh, 1979 to very recent papers. And these algorithms are basic, basically it's it's usual people will do. So basically, they will build a generative probabilistic model on how the labels are generated. And then they will estimate the parameters of the label using maximum likelihood by EM algorithms, treating the true hidden variable as uh, the true uh, labels as hidden variables. And then they, they go back to estimate the, um, the, the labels with the parameters they just estimated by maximum likelihood. Um, so, there are, so the problem for EM is that there are so many models you can use, from very simple model that use only Bernoulli distribution and confusion matrix in, in 1790, and to very complicated models that count all sorts of factors and use multi-dimensional representations uh, very recently. So the real question is how to choose these models. So we have simple model and complex model, which one we should use. There's a trade-off here. And also, given a model, uh, how could you influence and decode the, um, the, the labels? So EM has this two-step approach where they first estimate the parameters and then go back to estimate the labels. So is this an optimal way to do it in the sense of minimizing the bitwise error rate? So if it's not, how much um, improvement we can get by using another different uh, efficient algorithm, even the model is the uh, same. And also, we can show that, yeah, the, 
And also, what's the connection between EM algorithm and the algorithm like majority voting and the QS um, I showed before? So this paper will try to, uh, this work will try to address these problems uh, by re rewriting the crowdsourcing problem into an inference problem of graphical models and use uh, inference techniques such as belief propagation and mean field. So, so some background on um, graphical model here. So graphical model is a high dimensional distribution, special high dimensional distribution whose probability uh, is a product of many local factors, uh, each of which, which is a psi, psi g here, depends only on a subset of variables. So this structure can be represented using a factor graph in here, where the cycles are variables, the squares are factors, and they are connected if this variable are involved in this uh, factor. So this is a very simple example. And now, given a graphical model, uh, we want to, a usual problem is to calculate the marginal probability, which, which requires, uh, of single variables, which requires to sum over or marginalize over all the other variables. And this is a difficult problem, usually in hard because you need to sum over exponential terms. Assume z here are binary variables. Um, so there are many approximation algorithms for doing this, including belief propagation and the mean field. So, um, so belief propagation uh, proposed by Yuda Pearl and many other people works by approximating the marginal distribution, PZ, um, with the product of a set of functions, M. Here, this function can be interpreted as passive messages because they are calculated iteratively by these two updates. One of them is sort of, you can understand it as a passing messages from variables to factors. Another is passing messages from factors to variables. So the detail of this algorithm is not of important for this talk, but just remember they have this iterative message passing style, which is sort of similar to the QS algorithm I introduced late, uh, earlier. Another, another set of algorithms are mean field algorithms which also approximate uh, the marginal distributions. But it works by approximating the joint distribution, PZ, um, the whole, the order of this, with um, a fully independent model. So, and you do this by minimizing the KL, KL divergence. And usually this problem can be solved using coordinate descent, and it's very efficient usually. So there are more background in in Wainwright Jordan's book or Carlos uh, Murphy's book. So now we need to build a graphical model for our crowdsourcing problem. To do this, uh, we start from the simplest thing that we can do. So we assume the workers, the, the labels of the workers are generated by a very simple Bernoulli distribution. Basically, LIG is the label of worker I gave, gave to uh, uh, image G is correct, equal to the true label Z, ZI, if uh, with probability QG. Otherwise, it's wrong because it's binary. And now here, QG is the accuracy of worker G, and I assume it's drawn from some prior distribution. So all the workers will have the same prior distribution, but they have different drawn of QG. <coughs> So now uh, we can calculate the posterior distribution, the joint posterior distribution of the true label Z and the reliability Q, which is proportional to the product of the, the prior distribution times a Bernoulli likelihood term. So, so here, in here, this DG here is the total number of images labeled by worker G. And CG is the number of correct images um, labeled by G among all these DG images. So this model assumes that all items are equally hard. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we assume uh, equal difficulty for all. It's the simplest model you can use. Now this CG um, 
is the number of correct images. So it's actually a function of the true label zi and also the noisy label lig. So now given this model, you can figure out what's the optimal estimator for the true label z. You actually should maximize the marginal posterior distribution of each zi individually. This will exactly minimize the expected bitwise error rate. And if you do this, it requires you to calculate this marginal distribution in which you have to marginalize over the reliabilities and then sum over all the other uh, true labels. So this is a difficult inference problem because it requires integration and summation over high dimensional space. This is where we are going to use inference algorithms. Any question for these slides? Sorry? You, you don't have any hyperparameter or something? Oh. Only observe labels. Uh, yeah, so hyperparameters are hidden in the prior of the QG. And you, somehow you can treat the QG as a prior. So you can also add priors on the, on, on the ZI, but I didn't do it just for simplicity. Right now it's uniform. So, so now we can, we can calculate, so, so now we can actually first integrate over the continuous variable Q. Q are the reliabilities. So we can get the marginal distribution over the true labels only. So the, the true labels are discrete variables. It's good for brief propagation algorithm. And this, in, and this in, uh, integration can be actually exactly calculated by pushing the integration inside to the products. So now the integration are only one dimensional integration and it's easily to calculate either by numerical methods or closed form solution. So now we can actually define this uh, one dimensional integration as some local factor psi g, um, which is a function of cg, but remember cg is a function of the true labels Z, zi that connects to worker g. So overall, we, can, we, act, we actually rewrite this posterior distribution of Z as a product of some fact, local factors, which has exactly the, the, um, the graphical model form. So, uh, for what? For the prior, you don't need to. Uh, you don't need to. So yeah, you can, you can set arbitrary prior. So you can still integrate over this thing, yeah. Um, now we can actually transform this uh, sort of bipartite assignment graph of crowdsourcing to a standard uh, factor graph representation where the variables are treated uh, are, are the tasks or images and the factors are the workers. So the idea here is that um, the workers, each worker actually introduce some sort of correlation on your posterior distribution of the, label, of the images that they labeled. So if the worker is very accurate, is very good, then all the labels should be consistent with his labels. So this is sort of correlation. So now we can run a standard belief propagation on just the posterior distribution of PZ. So, so we have this local factor psi here. So what the shape it looks like. So it's an integration, it has this integration form which depends on the definition of the prior QG. So if QG has a flat prior, so the reliability can be uniform between zero and one, then you have this symmetric and uh, convex shape. So we're on both ends, when the workers are either perfectly wrong or perfectly correct, it provides a lot of information. So it has a high value. And when the worker have like half of correct, it's very random and it basically provides no information, so it has no values. Any question? So here's some other prior. So in this case, you have larger probability to be Q larger than 0.5, so there are more experts. So in this case, um, all correct counts more information than all wrong. So here's another prior. So we have um, half of the spammers and the half experts. 
here's when the, um, when the workers are deterministically equal to some Q larger than 0.5. In this case, the, the factor is actually a straight line. You'd expect to go back. <laughs> um, wouldn't you expect sort of the one you didn't show, which is the, the lump in the middle of, of around 0.5? It's going to be hard to get correct. It's going to be. Oh, uh, you mean just this one without this? No, not either end. Uh, is it? Uh, so actually, you can guarantee for arbitrary choice of QG, uh, this thing is always, ha always have like positive second um, derivative, second in the sense of finite, uh, finite difference. So you always have this. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can actually show that. Yeah, it could be flat, but you. So fundamentally, it's, so if you look at the form of this uh, shape, fundamentally, it's something close to the entropy. So when you have deterministic values, it has to more, oh, negative entropy, sorry, yeah. When you, when you have a hammer at 0.5. Oh, in, uh, when, when you, you have no expert. So in that case, it will be flat. At all. Yeah. When it's just, that's flat. just the red, the flat of the red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so remember, I have this thing. So basically, the value of Q will, will decide the slope of the line. So if it's the, in the middle, it's just flat. Yeah. So now you can just run the standard leaf propagation algorithm. So this is just form. Don't bother the form. But essentially, we'll decode the true labels CI by maximizing the marginals we get from the algorithm. But it's not acyclic, right? So you're doing loopy blue propagation. Right? Yeah, it's approximation. So you don't know whether it'll converge? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, but in this, prob this problem is somehow easy, because if you have a lot of workers, um, the distribution actually concentrates around the true value. So that's not a problem here. But yes, it's always a problem for loopy propagation. So now what's interesting is that because the labels are binary labels, so you can actually transform this, um, the binary distribution into a log, log odds ratio. So, and also the same for the messages. Now both the messages and the marginals are right as real values. And then we can transform the whole message passing algorithm using this log odds form. And we get something very similar to QS algorithm. So um, basically, we have the same formula for estimation labels, again, a weighted version of majority voting, a linear update from task to the workers, but a very a different, a different message update from workers to task. So for QS, this is a linear update. But for our algorithm, we have this nonlinear sigma, sigma function whose form I will not define it in this talk. But basically, it's some um, symmetric and monotonically increasing function. It's a sigmoid function, well saturated at large values. Um, and it can be calculated uh, very efficiently when it's O dg log dg squared. So dg is the uh, is the number of uh, images labeled by worker G. So it's only uh, slightly worse than KOS, whose complexity is ODG. So the idea here is that using this, uh, this sigmoid function is somehow more robust. It doesn't go to infinite as the linear update. So this is actually important. Uh, the stigma values. This, this one? Of the, uh, the, of the right side. Oh, oh, this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, it's actually, uh, so yeah, it's complicated because sigma, sigma is a function of many variables. But sigma is a symmetric function. So, so this is just a iterative plot where you treat all the inputs are equal. So, yeah. So it's, yeah, a special case. But in general, you can prove it's a symmetric, uh, monotonic increasing. It, in general, it has this shape. And so that means the log odds. So y is now defined as the, can you go back uh, uh -huh. a, a page? Right. Yeah. 
So actually, I they saturate, but this doesn't this doesn't say that the yeah this, this doesn't put anything on the marginals. It's just that the that the size of the messages are saturated. Yeah. So somehow you because in this algorithm you actually put the prior. So because of the prior, they don't set. Yeah. They, they somehow the probability are bounded from zero. Now it's interesting to look at special uh, the algorithm when we take some special priors. So if the workers have this prior, a deterministic prior equal to, uh, q equal to some large value larger than 0.5, then my algorithm reduced to majority voting, not surprising, and it's not good because this prior doesn't count any diversity nor um, the adversaries in for the workers. Uh, Dirac? Yeah, yeah, any. I see. So once it's larger than 0.5, it, if it's small than 0.5, then you get some sort of like uh, anti. Yeah, yeah. So what is the what is the signal function, function in this case? So um, is it like a step function? So actually, it's a uniform function. So every time this sigmoid, the, every time you update, you will set this one equal to uniform. Then you go back this uh, update, uh, you will get yeah. a majority voting. So now what's interesting is that if you take some prior called Hordan prior, in this case, the worker's reliability equals to either 0 or 1 with half probability. Um, then in this case, my algorithm reduced to the QS algorithm, in which case the sigmoid function reduced to the street line. Um, and this prior is actually very, very special. It's a limit of the beta 0, 0 prior. So so in objective statistics, people, many people discuss this prior because it has very nice um, properties that matches uh, Bayesian uh, statistics to frequent list. For example, if you do a Bayesian inference over this prior, you, get, you will exactly get a maximum likelihood estimator. So however, this prior is also not reasonable in practice because it actually counts too many adversaries. In practice, you cannot image you have a prior like this. So basically, you have almost uh, as many as adversaries as workers, and you don't have anything between them. This is very extreme. Um, and because my algorithm actually can pick arbitrary prior, so you can think about pick some more reasonable priors like this. So we have a reasonable amount of adversaries, but not over-dominate. Um, and in practice, this works way better than both of them. Why not just include some lower questions and have an empirical estimate for the prior? Yeah, I tried that. I, I actually tried that. So yeah. we can actually. Is that the sort of curve you end up with? Or? Um, so it depends, actually. So, but actually, so yes, in general, it has this shape, but because. Um, but sometimes it has some peak, so it's not smooth as I. Uh, tried because real data um, is not that large, so you cannot see the effects. But the point is that um, I tried different priors, and I even tried to learn the priors. But actually, the priors, the, the choice of prior actually doesn't influence the accuracy a lot once you have some general shape like this. So I will talk about this in the experiments. So these priors only for binary labels. Yeah. It's a lot of class. So this prior would be too strong. So for the multi-class, so basically this is a beta prior. For multi-class, you have Dirichlet prior. Then you have like multinomial Dirichlet prior. I think but same. Then the, but then the factors, oh, but it's conjugate. So you don't yeah, have yeah. to do the integral. Yeah, you don't okay. have to. Then, yeah, integral will be high dimensional if it's not conjugate. Right, but, but if it's yeah. Dirichlet, it's OK. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. So now I talked about how to use blue propagation to do the inference. Here we can use mean field algorithm also, and it actually connects to the EM algorithm. So what we do here is a slightly different. So we have this joint posterior distribution over Z, the true label, and the reliability Q. Now we just approximate the whole distribution with a special fully independent model, a model whose probability is just a product of some local probability mu i over z i, 
and some mu, nu, nu g over qg. So both mu and nu are probabilities. And then we minimize the KL divergence. So we can use a coding descent algorithm to solve this. We update mu, we fix the nu, and update, you know. And what's special is, is that this new function uh, distribution is a continuous distribution. Um, so you cannot update it exactly. But you can actually show that at the optimal point, the new is always a beta distribution. So every time you just need to update a keep trace of the parameter of a beta distribution, that's fine. And that's exactly the optimal solution. So, and then um, what you can do is that you can actually approximate um, the update of new with some one order approximation. So the reason I want to do this approximation is because then I get a much simple update. So this is approximate. After approximation, we, are, we have update for mu and the q. q. Now, the q distribution, actually, you only need to uh, keep trace of the mean value of qg. So alpha, beta are the prior. Uh, so here, I assume the reliability um, have a prior of beta distribution. Alpha, beta are the coefficients in the prior. So now what's interesting is that if you go back and derive the EM algorithm on the same model, uh, you find that you get almost the same update, except that the update for QG, um, the alpha is replaced by alpha minus 1. So that's only one small difference. Um, but actually, this small difference actually makes a lot of sense, because it's essentially uh, uh, add one smoothness. So you will make the algorithm more robust. So in, in general, if you pick a uniform prior, in that case, alpha and beta are equal to 1, then this update is likely to, to exactly, up, QG is likely to update 0 or 1. If that happens, you can check the EM algorithm. It will then just stop um, at this point and will never update. So in many cases, using a add one smoothness is actually a good thing to do. So and the difference between this alpha and alpha minus 1 is just the difference between um, marginalizing a beta distribution or maximizing a beta distribution intuitively. So um, our algorithm can have some several different extensions because it's sort of derived using a generative model, so you can think about different models. Before, I used this very simple Bologna model, where the labels are just generated from a single Kwan Bologna likelihood. So QG is the accuracy here. Um, but you can actually extend it to a more complicated model that essentially have this confusion matrix structure. So in this case, uh, depending on different value of zi, uh, the probability of correctness is different. One is sensitivity, another is, is specificity. And this model um, it is actually very important in many practical data sets because usually we have this uh, position recall issue where uh, if the label is plus one, then the accuracy could be very high or very low. And this model can capture this. Um, I will show experiments on that later. And also, since we are able to marginalize over the parameters, we can actually do model selection by just comparing. So if we have, say, these two models, and we want to decide which model fits the data better, what we can do is to calculate the marginal distribution condition of model one and model two, and compare which marginal, marginal, marginal likelihood is larger. And also, we can incorporate item features um, expert labels, all sorts of things you can think about. So now I'm going to present some experiments, starting from some simulation examples and then to the real data. So this is a figure that I showed earlier. So basically, the assignment graph is a random bipartite graph. And then the, the, the workers' reliability are drawn from this very simple uh, prior, where you have half experts, half spammers. Then, uh, and then I increase the number of workers per images. 
So as the number of worker increase, the accuracy is generally decay. So uh, QS is generally better than majority voting, but it actually performs badly in when the workers are the number of workers are small. So now if you actually use BP algorithm with a uniform prior, you get a slight improvement. Remember QS is actually also BP algorithm but with beta zero zero prior. So the only, the, the only difference is just different choice of prior, including the majority voting. Now if you use a BP beta 2 1 prior, uh, you get much better. So what this means is basically saying, because the true prior actually don't have any adversaries, so in this case you count less adversaries, it's reasonable to get much better. And here is what I, if I use the true prior, because I know it, in my BP algorithm. So in some sense, this is a, what you can do uh, in the best case, in practical, because you never know the true distributions. And, and actually, the BP21 prior is very close to the true distribution. So before I said I tried, say, different priors, and I even tried to learn the prior. Uh, but actually, it doesn't matter in this case, because it's already very close to the true distribution. So, um, okay. So, oh, sorry, I have something else. So, now I also run the EM algorithm and the approximate mean field algorithm. So, their performance is slightly worse than the BP, but not very significantly. So, only a minor improvement. So, um, here is the same uh, data. But now I change the number of images per workers, when the fix the number of workers per image. So you can think about if you fix number of workers and only change the number of uh, images for workers, what you can do is to get more accurate estimation of workers' reliability. And because majority voting doesn't use any reliability information, so it's always flat. And all the other algorithms, uh, actually gets better when you have more images. Basically, you train the workers more. But majority uh, QS is worse, and then the other algorithms are sort of close, also close to the true distribution. So is the EM theory exactly the White Hill one? But without the task difficulty? Yeah. Um, this one? Oh, well, EM, just in general, so this uh, is the model, but minus the task difficulty. Yeah, yeah, so I, I forgot that paper, but this is a one coin model without difficulty, but wins the prior. So here's when I change the, uh, change the data priors. So before I have this model, now I increase, gradually increase the percentage of adversaries. So now I actually have adversaries. So as the ad adversary increase, uh, majority voting gets worse because you know it's majority voting. Um, but the, all the other algorithm actually gets better because as you have more adversaries, uh, the adversary actually carry some carry some information. Uh, if you can detect them, you can flip the labels and you can get a <coughs> correct uh, label. And this is what this algorithm do. But what's interesting, you can see the EM algorithm, which is this uh, light dark curve, is actually much worse than the, the approximate mean field approximation, which is essentially different from EM algorithm by adding an alpha one. And it's actually get worse when, the, the, when, when there are a lot of number of uh, um, adversaries. So this is because this uh, s uh, numerical stability issue. Sorry. Practically, uh, for real. Yeah, uh, I didn't say. I didn't I say. Never this. Saw, I never yeah. said any uh, yeah, yeah. Generally, it's around. Uh, uh, generally, it's better than real gas. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's a real data set. So it's an image data set with a set of uh, birds. So we have two types of birds here, and we want to identify which is which. So it's a binary classification problem. 100 images and uh, 40 
39 workers. So here, we, uh, because originally they are like, it's a fully connected graph. So we subsample the number of workers. And what's interesting is that actually all these algorithms, EM, BP, QS, are worse than majority voting in this case. And they are even worse than the algorithm proposed in the same paper, Wellinger et al. 2010, um, that use a um, multi-dimensional representation model. That model is sort of complicated because has difficulty, all sorts of things, but it's get, get much better than majority voting. So what's the reason for this? Because for, for these three curves, I'm actually using the one coin model. If I use the two coin model, but run the same inference algorithm, I immediately get as good as uh, running the algorithm. Sorry, what's the two coin model? Two coin model is the confusion matrix model. So oh. depending on, yeah, sorry. So the arrow is more symmetric. Uh, yeah, so this is the natural of this data set because I forgot which, but one of the birds is more difficult to identify than the other one. So they also talk about this thing in their paper. So basically for this data set, the most important factor is this two-coin assumption. Other than that, anything like uh, multi-dimensional representation or uh, image difficulty seems doesn't help, at least according to this result. <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, I think it's around the same. It's just too many prizes. I didn't want to show. Okay. Yeah. Because you imagine judges deciding, well, the indigo bundle is really easy. So uh -huh. if I ever see something that I'm confused by, it must be the blue cross. I'm loving that. They should be able to learn as they as they label. But if they're not sure, it must be the one that, that that's not easy. So you are saying uh, which part is unreasonable, this or? I'm just saying that the task you'd expect, it's a kind of weird thing to have a very different level of difficulty for two classes, because there are only two classes. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. So if you're, um, if you're sure it's not the end of and the end of is easy, it must be the other guy. So you think the judge would learn as they judged. But they don't get any feedback, are they? But it's, well, they will see the point of easy. Are they, two are they getting feedback but, in this data set? Or was the data set just bulk label without feedback to the digits? Uh, so what, what do you mean by feedback? So, oh, so it, it, you mean the workers are like so, sort of random without feedback to the... To the um, Other than instructions, were the workers given any error correction information as they were labeling? Yeah, I don't know. So it's just the data set that they gave me. Also, if you have a classifier that's operating at the Bayes error rate, let's assume people are then it's not necessarily true that the, the optimum confusion matrix, in fact, is, is symmetric, depending on the distributions. So they could be being, the humans could be being Bayes optimal and still have an asymmetric confusion matrix. But presumably, if they get feedback, they have an incentive to go towards Bayes optimal, right? I mean that. Right, or even if they're trying to be, I'm just being generous. Right, right. But, you know. So you can actually plot the, what the empirical confusion matrix look like in this data set. And it's actually asymmetric. So, and then we tried another natural language data set. So in this case, we have a set of sentence and in which we want to rank the temporal orders of two verbs. So in this case, John fell and Sam pushed him. Uh, push is the fast, so it's the answer. So, and now in this data set, actually story is different because if you try the one coin, two coin model, it's most likely the same. You get the same performance. Um, except QS and majority voting is much worse. So, yeah. Sorry? Uh, okay. well, there were features, right? Just no, features. No, no features, just the <laughs> sentence. Uh, just the problems itself, no, no features. Only labels. Yeah. I know the interesting thing is uh, in the QS paper, uh -huh. from the survey, their approach is the best. Yeah, Probably so, it's the worst. Uh, so yeah, from theory, it's best. But it assume a lot of things. And uh, so they assume the, the number of workers and number of images has to be very large. Um, and the graph has to be generated randomly. And more importantly, they assume the model is from the one coin model, which is not reasonable. And even, even the, the assumptions are all correct. 
um, uh, they still perform worse in case where you have small number of workers. So they call this phenomena phase transition. They actually discuss this problem. So yeah. I think fundamentally it's because they use this hardened prior. They don't add any smoothness into the algorithm. That's the problem. To summarize, I have this, uh, used this graphical model methods to solve crowdsourcing problem, generalize KOS majority voting, and connect to uh, EM algorithm with mean field methods. Um, some insights here. So, um, so first of all, of choose the prior is actually critical. So majority voting, KOS, BP, they are different. They are just the, the same algorithm with different priors. And also sometimes for EM algorithm, you can also see improvement when using this, uh, different priors. So another thing, choose the model is really critical. So one coin model, two coin model sometimes can make really difference. So the fundamental question here is to how to do model selection um, on this problem. And now inference problem sometimes matters, sometimes doesn't. So BP uh, is sometimes slightly better than EM, but sometimes the same. So I wouldn't say this is a critical factor, but it's something that you can, should be careful. And finally, this related work of mean, minimax mean principle algorithm um, is another approach that also uses a very sim simple uh, Sim simple unifying principle by Danny, John, uh, Sumit, and E. So it's interesting to see. Because your system, except for the two pass case, doesn't have a difficulty per item. Uh, we don't have. We don't have. Uh, uh, which, which? So your whole approach yeah. does not have a measure of difficulty per Yeah, we don't have. Except for the, the two, the example you give different. Even that doesn't happen. It's just the same coin, the same two coins for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Sorry, I didn't hear you. It's going to be hard to compare. Uh huh. Denny can correct me if I'm wrong, but they seem like they're doing some data tests and see what happens. They're starting with different tasks. So, yeah. Actually, it's quite clear that the algorithm is quite creative in the data set and new data set to detect a query's name or not. And okay. that is very interesting. Because in that data set, uh, they were scan uh, is a YAML approach. It's much worse than majority voting. Okay. There's no adversarial data. If there is an adversarial data, you can see that majority voting uh, is, will become worse. But in that data set, majority voting is very strong, but EM approach is, is, is very bad. It's much worse than majority voting. Okay. That, that's possible, actually. So, so if uh, if the workers have very close uh, reliabilities, then you can actually show majority voting is the best thing you can do. Uh, so probably that's the actually, reason. In that, in that data set, the, the workers yeah. have uh, very different performance. Very different reliability. One, oh. one, <laughs> one, 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 oh, that's, one, that's one is very strong. Uh -huh. And the other workers are better than random guess. Okay. So, so there's no adversarial. Uh -huh. Once you use EM algorithm, better accuracy. And the, the stronger guy will get more and more weight. Okay. And finally, the, the, the stronger dominate the, the, the labels. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if you add some prior to smooth the, the, the whole, all the workers, whether you can get okay. some, okay. some <laughs> better weight. So if you, is, can you degenerate Denny's model uh -huh. back into your model? Uh, I think, yes. Um, no, I don't have a model. I just have like a set. Well, yeah. there's some way to take his thing and chop out like per item difficulty and chop out only up two classes. Does it match up in some way? If, if you, you, so, actually, in our, uh, in our framework, if we have no constraints for the, if, no, if we have no constraints from the majority voting, our approach will reduce to yeah. the EM approach. The yeah, Dewey is key, yes. Right. Yeah. If we move the second second set of control, uh, from Devlin's uh, inspired by Devlin's gaining approach, and our approach will reduce, reduce to maturity voting. Right, but so is there some way to make it reduce to th is then? So, 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 uh, so yeah. Chan's work is, uh, is, is based on uh, 
it's also a bit of a computer matrix. It's a bit of a devil is getting approach, but he put a prior, beta prior on the on the parameters. I see. That's which, a difference. Which doesn't naturally happen in Maxent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't naturally come out of Maxent, the Beijing thing. Uh, so his embedded framework of the hour is so I, I think uh, so in your framework, the alpha, you have this regularization, which is sort of like a prior. And, but it's different prior. It's like putting some like Gaussian prior over the um, exponential parameters yeah. instead of a uh, beta prior. Penalize the fluctuation yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of the empirical count from the equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, think, yeah. I think the difference is, is that, so here I'm seeing taking different models you can do different algorithm to decode the solution, even with the same model assumption. So EM is one of them. You can do something different. Um, I think this is what. Johnny and John's stuff has these axioms, uh -huh. very, very nice, very clean axioms. And their methods are at least consistent with them. Is it, is it unique? Does it follow from the axioms that you have to do minimum axioms? So the question is, what happens when, when with your system it is axioms? So you can squish it down. So. Uh, what, what do you mean by axiom? Uh, the, well, then uh, you know, oh, objectivity. Oh, actually, uh, uh, create a term about objectivity sense. OK. Yes. There's objectivity sense. That means the whole of objectivity is right. The difficulty um, of an item doesn't depend on the person judging it. Mm -hmm. Actually, on the models. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, sure. And, and so that thing followed from those two principles, right? Or at least they were consistent with those two principles. The question is, if, if you apply the same two principles to your, I mean, does it also satisfy? Actually, that's very, very, very simple, right? So, right. So, so they have this first principle, and then basically it's used to construct the model, right? So they, in the minimax formula, you have this, uh, you, you have to choose the sufficient statistic to, uh, to match. And this effectively is choosing some exponential family model. Um, so it's, I think it's basically selecting the model, but with a more intuitive way. Yeah. Actually, uh, I just said that his work is just using David Scanley's confusing matrix model. But he put a prior on the computer matrix. He put a beta prior on the computer yeah. matrix. And then, and then he did a full basic inference using video propagation and the own uh, new fields. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And before, before child's work or, or other work, uh, just, just, uh, just did a point estimation using EM. Yeah. That's the essential difference. And given how little data you have, it makes sense to integrate. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think his, his, his prize is quite meaningful. It's a better prize to one. That means assume the, the most guys are good guys. That's, a, that, that's, that's consistent with the, with the real data. That's why QA's approach doesn't work for real, real data. OK. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So basically, I try different priors. Once they have this like decreasing shape, then it's generally OK. It doesn't matter to use beta 2, 1, 3, 1, or 10, 1. Yeah. OK. That's our speaker. Thanks. Oh, by the way. Uh,